Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. It is Tuesday, September 15th, 2015, and I'm Leanne McAdoo. Here's a look at what's coming up tonight. Tonight, Hillary Clinton says victims of sexual assault have a right to be believed. I want to send a message to every survivor of sexual assault. Don't let anyone silence your voice. You have a right to be heard, and you have a right to be believed. We're with you. Does anyone believe anything Hillary says? Then, European borders and the sovereignty of European nations are being rapidly erased, both by mandates from the EU on the immigration crisis and by dictates from Germany on the economic crises. Germany has been in control in both of these crises and is also pushing now for the creation of a European army. It looks like the blueprint for European consolidation is going according to plan. All that and more on tonight's InfoWars Nightly News. We've reached a critical juncture in the globalist program. That's why we're launching Operation Money Bomb 2015. And with the money we raise from this, we will be able to stay on the satellites and get on cable stations across North America, reaching tens of millions of more people right at the time they're receptive and looking for answers. So join us this September 16th and 17th. We're charging up, getting ready, and going in. Well, the latest Planned Parenthood undercover video shows even more of what we've seen in the past. Income being generated from the sale of fresh baby parts. They're actually talking about them in this video as if they're selling organic produce. Now, this video is once again coming from the Center for Medical Progress, and they have exposed Planned Parenthood's involvement in the trade of aborted fetal tissue and organs, uh, once again stressing how they're talking about violating federal law to sell these body parts for profit. There's another human biospecimen collection, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I don't know, Deborah's kind of been our contact on the national level for the, for the past eight months or so. Yeah, we haven't been working with anybody who wants stem cells. We've just been working with people who want particular tissues. Oh, particular, interesting. Like a, you know, cardi they want cardiac, or they want eyes, or they want neural, they want spinal cords. So, I, I mean, that sort of thing. I, Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Everything we provide is fresh. I mean, whoever, however they want to work it is, is fine with, with us. Typically, most places are doing per specimen because um, it just makes most sense because that's how they work and that's how we work as well. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, that's actually, I'm supposed to have a discussion with, with one of the one of the affiliates later, possibly later this weekend about that. Yeah. Um, but well, one of the uh, yeah, things that we advise is um, our affiliates is to really consider that carefully. That might be a different situation yeah. with um, independence, though. I have been talking to the executive director of the National Abortion Federation. We're okay. trying to figure this out as, as an industry about how we're going to manage remuneration. Oh, headlines for would be a disaster. Oh, yeah. Like, that wants to, that wants to give our organization money for the tissue. Like, I think that that's a valid change, and that that's okay. We have independent colleagues who, who generate a fair amount of income during this. This is important. This could destroy your company and us uh -huh. if we don't time, you know, those conversations. So when is it going to be enough for people to realize that there is some illegal activity going on? No matter how many times Planned Parenthood rolls out their minions in the media, they are profiting from the sale of fetal tissue. Now, Rand Paul is skirting right around Congress, and he is actually issuing a call straight to the churches. And he is saying, defund Planned Parenthood. Um, there is a defundtoday.com. You can go there 
You can find out exactly who you need to contact in Congress, as well as he gives a sample sermon for some churches to issue a call uh, to their service to just defund Planned Parenthood today. Something has got to be done. How many more of these videos are we going to see before something happens? Now, we're actually getting a story in the news about antidepressants, and could antidepressants be making you violent? It's finally happened enough in the news that there, this, these studies are coming out. This is a new study out of Oxford. It says young people who take drugs, including Prozac, are 50% more likely to be convicted of assault and murder. And the family of antidepressants included are the most commonly prescribed of all of the pills. In the U.S., around 11% of people aged 12 and over take antidepressants, and this includes SSRIs, and this is including to the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. Now, the tablets already carry a warning that drugs are linked to suicidal thoughts in young people, uh, and it's also suspected that they were linked to violence but evidence has been sparse until now. And of course, we're always pointing that out, that they never link violent acts with any of the things that are happening here in the country because, of course, it's never Big Pharma's fault. Well, they're finally starting to put some evidence together. Now, when you consider the fact that 22 veterans are committing suicide a day, most of them young veterans, put two and two together when we understand that this is the go-to prescription for veterans with PTSD, or any issues really when they're visiting the VA. They're given mounds of pills to take. And of course, we're seeing the, um, the fallback from that with 22 veterans committing suicide a day. Now this research is showing that the risk is highest in 15 to 24 year olds. And of course, that is not insignificant and there needs to be some more public health implications for that as well. And of course, in this article, people are saying, oh, well, that's really interesting, but there's, still doesn't prove SSRIs fuel aggression, and it's already known that violent criminals are more likely to have psychiatric problems than other people. Yeah, and that's why whenever we hear these stories of people committing acts of violence, their neighbors are always talking about how, oh, he was just such a nice guy. You never would have expected him to do anything like that. Hmm. So it's just these violent episodes that people tend to have. Now, for your daily dose of irony, I give you Hillary Clinton. I want to send a message to every survivor of sexual assault. Don't let anyone silence your voice. You have a right to be heard and you have a right to be believed. We're with you. But of course, Hillary wasn't saying that when it was her husband, Bill, who was accused of being a sexual predator multiple times. Now, Twitter, of course, erupted with compar comparisons to the 90s when she defended her husband against accusations from at least three different women. She was calling it the bimbo eruptions, the bimbo files. This was Juanita Broderick, Paula Jones, and Kathleen Willey. They all pointed fingers at Bill Clinton as a sexual predator who was making unwanted physical advances. She, Hillary Clinton famously stood guard against what she called these bimbo eruptions during the 1992 presidential campaign season. She also defended a child rapist during the 70s. She was a lawyer uh, in a private practice and she later was caught on tape laughing about that experience. We reported on that here at InfoWars. The 12 year old victim in the case said last year that Clinton took her through hell and she filed false court filings that painted the victim as a liar. And of course, this is the kind of news that you're not gonna hear on the establishment media because they are all kind of rooting for Clinton because she's for women, just not women who are accusing her husband of being a sexual predator. And that's why we need you to continue supporting this operation as you've been doing for the last 20 years. In my arms. Yeah, that's Alex Jones, baby. All right, we're talking about... Infowars.com, which had its humble beginnings as a small website attached to Alex Jones's radio and access TV shows, has become the leader in alternative news and information. And through the years, Alex has taken the financial support provided by listeners of the radio show, readers of the website, viewers of his DVD documentaries, and freedom lovers all over the world, and reinvested that support back into the Infowars news operation. 
With your support, we've expanded our offices, built studios, hired reporters, video editors, writers, other support staff, and created the premier alternative news network. You made this possible with your support, and we sincerely thank you. The time has come to expand once again, and this time we want to literally launch InfoWars.com into space. That's right, we're launching our own satellite broadcast signal to cover all of North America, and we need your help. But first, let us show you how it works. Shows are created live, like The Alex Jones Show, or pre-produced, like The InfoWars Nightly News in HD. These shows are launched according to the atomic clock, and the HD signal goes through a closed caption data embedder, which sends a signal to a closed captioning service, and they begin the process of adding text to the screen. This is done in real time, and it is mandated by the FCC. The signal then goes to an MPEG transport streamer, which sends a signal to a satellite uplink facility. They blast the signal from the uplink satellite to the stationary satellite position to cover all of North America. The satellite is named SES-3 and run and maintained by the largest satellite distribution network, SES, which maintains a global satellite infrastructure to reach 99% of the planet's population. The satellite sends a signal back to Earth, where it is available to thousands of local television stations. It's also available for free to anyone who owns a C-band satellite dish pointed at 103 degrees west. Using a receiver, they can tune to 3,740 megahertz vertical and receive our broadcasts on channel 11. There are over 2,200 TV stations in the United States, hundreds in Canada, and another 1,200 in Mexico that could potentially receive this free-to-air broadcast. Each one of these local stations is able to grab the satellite signal and broadcast it to millions of homes in North America, potentially to over 400 million people. There is an enormous cost in buying and maintaining the equipment, paying for the satellite bandwidth, and the cost of closed captioning service. The monthly service fees alone total nearly $40,000, which is why we're crowdsourcing InfoWarriors all over the world to help us reach our goal of $1 million, which will allow us to reach 400 million people. It's called Operation Money Bomb 2015. Imagine being able to reach 400 million people who are victims of mainstream media mind control, the ones who still believe in the left-right paradigm, enforced drugging, water fluoridation, and the plan of divide and conquer. Your support will allow us to help these people break free of their mental shackles, help bring about a peaceful revolution, and restore our republic. If you're able to help us financially reach our goal, then log on to InfoWars.com forward slash money bomb and contribute what you can. But there's another way to help that will not cost you anything. Go to InfoWars.com forward slash money bomb, download our informational packet, email it to your local television station, then follow up with a phone call to ask the station to carry the Alex Jones Show and the InfoWars Nightly News. Everyone can join in, and we cannot prevail unless we have your help. So please, log on to InfoWars.com forward slash money bomb today and help us make Operation Money Bomb 2015 a resounding success. Your support will help us reach 400 million people. I'm David Knight for InfoWars.com. Thank you for watching Operation Money Bomb 2015 and for your support. Well, joining me in studio now is David Knight. I am certainly looking forward to the Money Bomb. You've experienced it you know, once before, but... Yeah, it's been three years, so it's yeah. been a long time for me, and it happened right after I came here, so yeah. it's going to be kind of a new experience for well, me. It's going to be super too. exciting. Be sure you guys tune yeah. in tomorrow. Yeah. So we'll be here. Now, I know something else that uh, is pretty exciting out there. Coloradoans are about to have their first marijuana tax holiday. They have made so much money uh, in state taxes, um, the, the revenue that they've gotten from taxes imposed on the sale of illegal marijuana, it's actually surpassed what they've brought in for alcohol sales. Um, the Colorado Department of Revenue, they, the state collected nearly 70 million in marijuana-specific taxes and just under 42 million in alcohol-specific taxes. So obviously a huge success story there, and it seems like this is going to be something that's uh, on the ballot potentially for a lot of other states. Well, that's true, Leanne. Uh, my concern, of course, is not how do we maximize revenue for the state, but how do we maximize freedom for the individual? And how do we stop the out of control subversion and corruption of our legal system? Because that's the thing that concerns me. I, I'm not looking for freedom. We were just out in the Pacific Northwest. We we're in states where it was legal. It didn't matter to me. I mean, I, I go to 